Welcome to another Doodly Pro tutorial. This time we're going to be taking a look at 3ds Max's wire parameters and a super simple, highly top secret way to figure out gear ratios. So what exactly do wire parameters do? Well it's as simple as having one object's movements manipulate the movements of another object as we see here in our little pong board. As I rotate this spinner here it moves the paddle up and down and getting wire parameters to work like this is as easy as selecting your object, right clicking on it, going to wire parameters, selecting transform, then rotation, Z rotation. It gives you this little selector line here. We want to select the object that it's going to move, transform, position, Y position and it'll bring up our little wire parameter window here and all we have to do is select which object is controlling what and we want our spinner cylinder to control our box and then hit the connect button. Go over here and when we rotate our spinner you can see our paddle moves. Now in the first example you notice the paddle moved a lot more with a lot less rotation that's easy to do. All you have to do is select your object and bring the wire parameters window back up which is as easy as going up here to our schematic view clicking on that selecting param wires. And all I should have to do is find my cylinder it'll be highlighted double click on it. Now if you take notice our wire parameter window is reversed than it was just a little bit ago but that's alright it's still doing the same thing if you look our cylinder's Z rotation which was our spinner is still affecting the Y position of our box. Which brings up the suggestion to always properly name things it keeps it from getting confused. Now if we want our rotation of our spinner to affect the position of our paddle even more we can write a super simple expression down here where it says Z rotation. Just put our mouse at the end and we're going to hit star for times or multiply by 30. We're going to hit update. Now get rid of all this stuff when we spin our spinner here, you'll see the paddle is moving a lot farther than it did a little bit ago. Wire parameters can also be used with the specific object's modifier. In this case, I have this box's twist modifier connected to this helper slider using wire parameters. And all I should have to do to control it is go up here, use my manipulator selector, and twist away. And of course this is completely keyframable, so you can animate until you're blue in the face. So there's the basics of wire parameters. We barely scratched the surface of what they're capable of. But for now, let's get into some simple gear ratios. Now these gear ratios are super simple. It's as easy as walking over to your oven and pulling out freshly made gears for the whole family. Let's see, oven, look at that. Got a little stove on top and everything. There's some forks and spoons and stuff. Was it a ladle? Sure. So the simple way to manipulate gears with wire parameters is to create two identical looking gears and just right click on one of them, go to wire parameters, transform, rotation, Z rotation, select our other gear, transform, rotation, Z rotation, and then we can hit our two-way connection right here. And make sure we give one of our Z rotations a negative symbol press connect. If we don't give it that negative symbol, they won't rotate the right way. So there you go. Super easy. But there's one problem. What if we want different size gears? Well, I can go in here and I could scale this guy down and move him back into place. But if you notice, the teeth don't line up. And if I rotate the big gear here, it's going way faster than the little gear. If I rotate the little gear, the big gear is still going way faster. I'm going to show you a super easy way that will keep you from having to worry about that at all. Now, all you have to do is follow these simple guidelines. First, I suggest using generic units. Now, if you don't like using generic units and you'd rather be using centimeters or inches or something like that, I would suggest maybe switching to generic units just to make your gears and then switching back. For now, let's just work in generic units. Okay. Second, all you have to do is when you create your cylinder, make sure that the radius is equal to your number of sides. And then lastly, make sure everything you make 
is an even number. If you don't use an even number and you use something like 15 for radius and then 15 for the sides, when you convert this to an edible poly and go to select every other side to create the gears for your teeth, you're going to get this really strange gap or you're going to have two right next to each other and it just won't work out. So to recap, three rules. Generic units, radius is equal to the number of sides you have, and use even numbers. See, I told you it was easy. Now let's move on to wiring up some different size gears. Let's move over to our Create tab and select Cylinder. Drag this out in the middle here. Looks good. Now for my first gear, I'm going to make the radius 48. And if you remember, we need to also make the sides 48. And for the height, let's just stick to the, let's just stick to making them even numbers. And cap segments, height segments, this stuff doesn't really matter right now. It looks good. So let's right click on this and turn it to a edible poly. There it is. Now in edible poly, I'm going to select polygons and start the boring process of selecting every other face on the edge. Now that we have every other face selected, we're going to extrude the teeth. The first thing I'm going to do is hit the extrude checkbox and I'm going to extrude by 3. Then I'm going to select the bevel checkbox. I'm going to make the bevel height 3 as well. So that combined with the extrusion, we get teeth that are 6 units tall. So there's one gear. Let's create another gear. Back in the create tab, cylinder, drag this one out. We'll make this one really small. We'll make this 18. Height make that six again cap segments are fine and the radius needs to match the sides 18 perfect right click on this one convert to edible poly this won't be too hard now we have these faces selected same extrusions as before three for the height of the extrusion bevel checkbox three for the height of the bevel okay and to save time, I have another gear in the oven. In case you're wondering, this cylinder has 24 sides, and of course the radius is 24 as well. Extrude 3, OK. Bevel 3, OK. Now, a secret to getting these three perfectly lined up is to make sure your first one is directly in the center, which it is. Add the two radiuses up in your head. So this gear has a radius of 48. This gear has a radius of 24. Together, that makes 72. And then if you remember, their teeth are 6 units. So that's 72 plus 6, which is 78. Make sure the Y and the Z axis are both on 0. Now to find out where this guy should be, make sure Y is on 0. So it's in line with the other two. So we know the radius of this one is 24. And the radius to this is 18. Those two together make 42. Add the six extra units for the size of the teeth. That comes to 48. But since the center of this gear is already at 78, we need to add the 48 with the 78. And that means we need to put this at a position of 126. Now here comes the easy part. Select the first gear, and we're going to rename this to be Master Gear 48 it has 48 sides and this can be gear 24 and this can be gear 18 and naming the gears like this is going to make it a lot easier for us when we go to hook up the wire parameters now for the easy part select your master gear right click and select wire parameters transform rotation z rotation it gives us our selection line we'll click on the next gear over go to transform rotation z rotation now we want the master gear to control our 24 sided gear so make sure this arrow is selected hit connect the first thing you'll notice is when we rotate the master gear they're rotating the wrong direction so that's why we need to add a negative symbol in front of the z rotation and click update now they're going the right direction next we have to fix the speed issue of our gears so here's an easy way to think about it our master gear here has a radius of 48 and this secondary gear has a radius of 24. Ah, see why we named them like this? So we're going to add a little expression down here. We're going to add a star for multiply and then the radius of our big gear divided by the radius of our middle size gear. Hit update, 
now when we rotate everything stays the same. Now if you guys are anything like me I immediately see that 48 and 24 can be reduced to 2 to 1. And if we update that it doesn't affect anything just makes our numbers a little cleaner. And remember if you ever close the wire parameter window and you still need to tweak something you can always go to your schematic view open that up make sure wire parameters are selected and click on whatever gear you need to fix. Now you may be thinking to yourself right now that is not how gears work at all. They should not be intersecting like that. The only problem is when we try and turn this gear here nothing happens and that's because it's only being controlled by the big gear. But we can easily fix this by selecting the middle gear going into edible poly and selecting the element we want to make sure the whole thing selected and then go to our top view and just rotate it like that until it fits in the right place. Then we get out of element mode and it stays like that and there you go. Now by this time you guys should know how to do this last one by yourselves so I'll just quickly go through it. Wire parameters, transform, rotation, Z rotation, select it, transform, rotation, Z rotation. We want our 24 radius gear, control the 18 radius gear, hit connect, and then we also need to add the negative, and then the multiply by 24, divided by 18, and that can probably be reduced, but hey, I won't tell if you won't tell. Now the thing is, the way I set these up right now, this still can't move, but if we go back to the big gear, it controls all three. And there you have it how to make gear ratios simple and some basic wire parameter techniques. And remember, if you have any questions about this tutorial, be sure to leave them in the comments below and I'll try and help you out. And if you'd like to see a more advanced wire parameters tutorial or you'd like to be kept up to date when new tutorials are released, you can subscribe to this channel by clicking on, get this, the subscribe button. But until next time, may the force be with... Didn't I do this joke already?